why don't we get started then? Good afternoon. I'm Dennis Galecki, and welcome to the 458th Imagine Greater Buffalo program and the 80th virtual Imagine lecture hosted by our wonderful Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. Thanks so much for joining us today. This program is created by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History and Nature, or Cezanne as I like to pronounce the acronym, and ImagineLifelongLearning.com. Now, we're going to start with today's speaker, Doug Kohler, shortly. But first, a little housekeeping. Everyone will be uh, watching will be muted during the presentation. There will be a few minutes at the end for Q&A. So if you have a question, we ask you to please type it into the chat box and we'll get to as many as we can. This program is being recorded. You'll be able to watch it again later on the library's Facebook and their YouTube channels. And hopefully share the link with your friends and networks. All right, most of this past year's programs have been themed to match the year long effort to celebrate Erie County's 200th, uh, 200th anniversary from last April to this April. That effort has been called EC200. A large planning committee was formed back in 2018, pre COVID, to consider and implement programs celebrating the county's bicentennial that officially began last April and is just finishing up this month. This committee benefited from the leadership of a distinguished trio, Melissa Brown of the Buffalo History Museum, Jason Hurley of the County Executive's Office, and our featured speaker today, Erie County historian, Doug Kohler. I'll give you the background on Doug. He's spoken at the Imagine series before in his role as county historian. Uh, though his day job is as a history teacher at Clarence Middle School. Involved in many projects revolving around our region's heritage, his most recent was a lead contributor to the Buffalo History Museum's major new exhibit, Continuum, 200 Years of Erie County. Now, uh, we're going to see if, um, if we made the connection, but either before or after Doug's remarks, we're going to uh, present the Imagine Greater Buffalo Recognition Award for 2022 to the, the organizing committee of EC200. So where are we? Do we have Doug? Uh, and if I'm not, I'm not seeing Doug in the in the roll call here. Well, so let's go ahead and um, let's let's if the county executive allows us to talk about why this initiative was so important. Um, you know, a lot of people have noticed over the past year all the exciting things that went on to celebrate Erie County's 200 years, and this was really your brainchild. So, tell us a little bit about it. Uh, hi, Joy. Hi, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Dennis, uh, for uh, discussing this with us today. Uh, today, we are uh, getting very near the wrap up of EC200, the celebration of Erie County's bicentennial. Uh, officially, our bicentennial uh, day was uh, April 2nd uh, of 2021. Uh, we are uh, finishing up the celebration of this past year, this month. We would have loved to have had uh, more in-person events and the original plan was to have many in-person events talking about the history of Erie County, uh, the, the people of Erie County, how we uh, developed from a rural community into an economic powerhouse in the 1800s. Uh, we're the eighth largest city in the United States at the turn of the 20th century and where we are today. And uh, we had a change up on the fly. <laughs> so I wanna thank all the members of the committee uh, for their work, because uh, I remember attending the first meeting in person back in, I think, uh, late 2018 or uh, 2019 at the uh, East Aurora Library, and uh, we had multiple uh, uh, events that happened after that that we were uh, going to meet in person, and of course, that all changed come March of 2020. So uh, I want to thank all the members of the committee for all their tremendous work uh, to take what could have been a, a, uh, uh, 
a, a bad situation and, and do nothing with it, which was uh, having to try to celebrate a bicentennial uh, without being in person uh, and finding great ways in which we could actually celebrate our community's history, the history of our people, the history of uh, who we were and, and who we are going to be going forward. So uh, I don't wanna take too much time. I think I saw Doug just jump back in, but uh, this was a, a goal of ours to uh, remind people that uh, you don't you, you don't progress as a community unless you know where you came from. And that's why it was important that we understood the history of Erie County, uh, the good and the bad, because it wasn't always great. Uh, but what, what makes our community the great community is today is everything that's happened in the past and how we can learn from that to become a better community for the future. So I wanna thank everyone who participated in the EC200 celebration. Uh, this is one of the last events officially, but uh, thankfully the work will not end. There's a, a committee will be staying together to some degree to address issues, to focus on our community, uh, the tremendous organizations and, and people that we have, as well as our history and celebrate that even further. So I wanna thank everyone who participated on the EC200 Bicentennial community, uh, Committee uh, who made the celebration as good as it could be, but also thank those who are going to continue to work forward, uh, moving forward, I should say, to uh, ensure that what we were able to build from this uh, committee and the work that we've done will not end uh, come the end of this month. So thank you to all for that. I have a proclamation here. I can't give it in person, of course, but uh, I just wanted you all to know that uh, today we are celebrating the Erie County Bicentennial EC200. And I wanna thank all the members of the com committee and uh, being the powers that I have as county executive, one of them is to proclaim days uh, in Erie County. And so today is officially uh, EC 200 day in Erie County. So to all the members of the committee, thank you for your participation and good work. Uh, I appreciate everything that you've done uh, to take uh, lemons and turn them into lemonade with regards to a celebration that was supposed to be in person, but it was mostly online. Uh, but uh, I, it, made a, it made for a very interesting bicentennial. And when we look back on this celebration, uh, we'll, we'll also remember all the, the effort that people put in to uh, ensure that uh, we could celebrate to some degree during what was a time that we'll never forget. Let's put it that way. So uh, I'll leave it with that. I know Doug's back on and uh, I'll turn it over to Dennis and, and thank him and his organization for also honoring our bicentennial committee uh, today. Thank you so much, County Executive. Dennis, I think before um, before we have Doug, because I know Doug is sort of getting settled with his uh, laptop and all, and I noticed Melissa Brown is on, another um, committee chairperson, as well as Jason Hurley. Um, we have our library director, John Spears, who is going to say something, and then we'll go right into Doug. And again, County Executive Polling Cars, we are grateful for what you have done over the past year and for participating in today's program. Much appreciated, uh, County Executive, for uh, hopping on and uh, and um, and that overview. Jason, if you can stay on uh, through the program, I'd like to read that proclamation. Uh, have you read it uh, into the archival record uh, as well as for our audience? Uh, it's well, it, it's well, uh, it's a good summary of a of a several year effort and the reason this uh, committee is getting uh, this recognition. Uh, so, so if you'll do that, thanks, Jason. Uh, and go ahead, John. Welcome to Buffalo. <laughs> oh, oh, thank you, sir. Um, just to introduce myself, I'm John Spears. I'm the new library director of the Buffalo and Erie County Public Library. And tomorrow will be a, uh, I'll have been here for two weeks in, in Buffalo tomorrow. And so far, everything I've seen in this community has just been incredible. As a new resident of Erie County, there just seems to be so so much to do. I've actually got my copy of the uh, Heritage Passport, which will give me at least kind of a guide for some of the things to see over the, over the next year. Um, but I wanted to, to thank and, and applaud county, the county executive and the bicentennial planning team, especially Doug, Melissa, and Jason, for all of the work that they've done in, in promoting Erie County and talking about the past and the history of this county and, and what it means for us today. Um, this is really one of the most incredible communities that, that I've had the privilege of being a part of. I can say that after only two weeks, you know, seeing some of the cultural amenities, the neighborhoods, the businesses, and especially just the friendliness of the, of, of the residents. So thank you for having me on today and just thank you to everyone involved in this project and keep doing what you're doing. 
Thank you, Jan. Thank you. All right, so are we uh, ready, Doug? Are you all set, all wired and plugged in? Dennis, that's a that's an iffy kind of thing, but I think I've kind of patched it together enough to make it work for about 15 minutes. Well, that's that's great. We gave an, uh, your introduction and background, and uh, now you can take it away and, and uh, reminisce a bit, but tell us why this was an important uh, uh, year of celebration, uh, where we've been, and to some extent where we're going. Yeah, I think that's Dennis. When you when you said you know 200 years of history, I think if you know, I, I tried to interpret it loosely. Um, and really kind of reflect back on what we did to commemorate the, the 200 years of history. Uh, sure. And I apologize, I'm on my phone zooming my laptop screen, so it's going to be, hopefully it'll work at least, uh, you know, to some extent. Um, but I think, you know, one of the things that we started with was this idea of a logo. And it's interesting because I did an activity with my students a couple of weeks ago where I asked them what they saw in it what elements you know, of their life could they connect to? And you know, they recognize the Buffalo, of course. And that leads into that conversation of, while we call it Buffalo, there weren't really you know, American bison that roamed across Erie County, but that probably they were close and that you know, the Haudenosaunee and indigenous peoples would have understood the concept of a Buffalo, even if there weren't Buffalo here. They recognized the canal boat, but what I found interesting was the discussion about the lantern and that element of the logo and how that encapsulated and incorporated, you know, our history. And the kids saw the lantern and they saw it as a pioneer. And then we talked about the, you know, the, the Underground Railroad. And then the discussion became the electric bolts, you know, were they, were they lightning bolts? Um, and then we looked at the, the, the city of Buffalo flag and how, you know, that those electricity bolts are there. And we picked it up here as, you know, that homage to electricity coming from Niagara Falls. And so, you know, while certainly the process you'll remember of getting to a point with the logo was certainly challenging, um, I think we all feel that it, it reached a point where it, it really can be read in a number of ways and transcend the, the bicentennial. I think that's one of the things we wanna talk about today is, you know, as we've wrapped this up, what comes next? And certainly we've talked about simply changing sort of the text in the middle of the banner and it no longer needs to be you know, bicentennial but it can be, oh, thank you, Joy, that's much, much better. Um, and, and will help transcend, um, you know, become something that we can use beyond simply, you know, April of 2022. Um, who's got, Joy, do you have the slides? Perfect, if you wanna throw them in slideshow mode, I've got them so they're uh, animated. Uh, no, over the, just on the other side, click where it says slideshow. See, that's the thing we teachers, we live in Google these days. Brilliant. Okay, go ahead. So you can hit the first one. So one of the things we did um, was we worked with Lamar. And uh, hopefully you've seen them. We had static uh, billboards. We had digital billboards. Um, in some cases, we used um, them for special messages. So when the border opened, um, you know, we, we had this message. Go ahead. We hit the next one. Uh, we would, did one just recently for, go ahead, keep going, for the Ukraine, um, and then hit it one more time. And then we also used them uh, in sort of this did you know fashion, so that we were able to, from last August through April, but I think the last one ran about two weeks ago, um, allowed us to kind of put a, a whole variety of facts to, to focus on different um, groups within Erie County, different departments within the county government structure itself, um, you know, facts about county, the county in different places that people may not have been as familiar with. So that was a really good way for us to, to sort of get a lot of history in short order in front of the, the, the public. And even though if you were driving on the inbound Kensington, it was not only in short order, it was in fast order. You kind of had to catch the billboard at the right time. You know, we, we had a lot of positive feedback um, on the billboards and sort of using that as a vehicle. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then one of, you know, kind of, I think one of the signature keynotes for celebrating our history over these 200, you know, over this year and the 200 years of history has been the opening of Continuum. So back in October, uh, the museum reconfigured the, that large room upstairs that used to be the neighbor's exhibit um, into now this exhibit we call Continuum from 
the Ice Age all the way through um, as you leave the exhibit rooms, so you haven't seen it yet. We have one of the, the bicentennial beer bottles on the wall out. There's information about COVID. So we tried to make it as much of a continuum from then to now as we could. Um, and if you get, if you haven't had a chance, you know, it, it was years in the making. We at one point had, you know, over 175 pages of script that we had to boil down to what's there now. But in terms of legacy, I think this becomes one of those things. I know Tony and Melissa are, are envisioning this being up for a while. So even though we've technically moved out of our bicentennial year, this is something that will continue on past and, and celebrate such a wide and diverse part of the history of Erie County. Okay, go ahead. Um, and then as we've talked about a, a lot, you know, the passports. And while again, you know, the, the moment of passport um, as a bicentennial event is passed, it becomes another one of those legacy pieces that we think can continue to drive um, people around the county. Go ahead, hit the next slide. So with the passport, we were able to pull together constituencies from you know, literally Grand Island to Sardinia. And what are the historical and heritage pieces that encompass all the corners of Erie County that one might travel to, or maybe that one hasn't traveled to. And so the passport gave us a vehicle for you know, or a different lens to look at the way, you know, communities celebrate their history and heritage. Go ahead, just show you a couple of what the, the passport pages look like. So every historical society, every heritage museum um, had an ability to, to sort of tell their story, what's there, uh, did you know kind of thing. What are the interests that might drive someone to Aurora or Tonawanda? Go ahead, I think I've got one more. Uh, Grand Island or Depew. And so this, exists not only in the physical form, and there are still some left. Um, we think there were about 500 passports that had not been distributed. And so they are headed to the library system to continue to be distributed because those heritage entities transcend the bicentennial. And this hopefully will continue to get people to look at it, but it'll also live on in electronic form. You know, we have a PDF of the passport that people can download and continue to utilize as that educational piece, because when Melissa and I met with Mark probably five, six years ago, that really was the focus that, you know, the era of parades and those sorts of things as a bicentennial commemoration were gone, but what would transcend this whole thing was the idea of education. And so the passport and the electronic version of it allow us to continue to, to, to get that information out and to, to promote people moving throughout the county to learn about places they might not be as familiar with. Okay, let's go on. Um, in addition, there's also the, we did the Bicentennial coin, which utilizes the logo on the front and then Old County Hall on the back. Uh, initially, they were used uh, as part of the redemption for um, the passport program. And then it also, um, you know, was a way of celebrating all the work that went into creating the passport. Um, you know, Pat Pierce and the, the North County group, uh, Chris and Alden and the, the Clarence group, all of them were integral in creating the passport, getting the word out, disseminating the passports, and now helping us to, you know, to redeem the, the people who did passport experiences um, with the coins. Now, we've also got more coins and um, we're you know, trying to encourage people to go see Continuum and to continue with some of the legacy things. So as long as there are coins, if you go see Continuum, you'll be able to get a bicentennial coin if you haven't already done so. Uh, go ahead. Um, one of the other things that we did, okay, great. Um, we had several events. We, we had all sorts of partners, the partners who worked with the passports, um, but then, smaller, much like we do with 1812, smaller community-based heritage organizations. And uh, I'm just gonna highlight this one because it's one that I really enjoyed working with a couple of times and that's Concordia Cemetery over on the city's east side. Um, we did an event where they dedicated their Pomeroy marker and then a second event in the fall where they brought in families from um, veterans of the Civil War who are buried in the cemetery and they came from as far away as Texas. It was a phenomenal event. Uh, and again, the Bicentennial gave us a chance to help promote these smaller groups that might not otherwise have gotten, you know, access to the, to the, the marketing venues that we were able to provide through the Bicentennial. Uh, go ahead. 
we, you know, we celebrated our history through a lot of diverse events. Um, we partnered with the Roycroft. Uh, on the far right, you see the, the Trailblazing Women's event that was at the Roycroft. On the far left, the Hispanic Heritage Month. Uh, we learned that Melissa Brown is an outstanding face painter. So one of the cool things is the Bicentennial gave us a chance to really get to know each other and some skills that are that are hidden. Um, but the Fall Fest at Akron Falls or uh, Como Lake Park was hugely attended. And, uh, you know, we had a presence there. We we're able to talk history, see some of the artifacts on the table that, you know, we were able to engage the, the guests with as they came through. Okay, go ahead. Uh, and of course, you know, we hope that this will reappear. Uh, I think one of the first events we had, and again, it ties to heritage, was the, um, the Flying Bison Bicentennial Pilsner which um, Flying Bison Brewery did for us uh, in honor of the, the Bicentennial and the, the pictures there of Mark tapping the keg uh, when it was ready last May. And it sold out. And I believe they were, if they weren't, haven't done another run, they were gonna do another run. It was a, a huge seller. Um, I'm not a big beer, beer fan myself, though it is part of our heritage, um, but I enjoyed it. It was great. And it was good of Flying Bison to partner with us on a number of events, but certainly by creating our own our own Bicentennial Pilsner was, was one of the highlights. Um, okay, then we've got uh, Heritage. So Western New York Heritage Magazine did a special edition, uh, almost along the lines of the passport, so that people could pick this up, look at the different um, communities, towns, what's their history. What, it, it's a really nice companion. Uh, and I'm sure if you reach out to Western New York Heritage um, that they still have copies of that available. I don't know, and if somebody on the Zoom knows, uh, please jump in, but I don't know that it's available in like Barnes and Noble, it's normal distributors. I think it, it's only available online, um, but I know, you know, I picked up several copies in it and it's around and people who've seen it, um, you know, Heritage did, did just a great job for the bicentennial and, you know, to, to backstop the passports. And then I think, you know, Dennis poses the big question and it's something we've been very cognizant of um, is what happens next? Um, immediately next is the Erie Canal Bicentennial coming up in two and a half, three years. Uh, if you haven't been down to the long shed where they're building the replica of the Seneca chief, uh, I, you know, it's a hands-on thing. Um, you know, John Montague is, is looking for, for volunteers and people to become engaged. And certainly I know much of the work of the committee, uh, the Bicentennial committee has already, you know, after we take a couple of months, catch our breath by the fall, we've said, well, you know, we're, we're ready to roll up our sleeves and jump right in with the Canal Bicentennial Group because 18, you know, 2025 will be the opening of our end of the canal and that's gonna be our moment on that stage. So, um, you know, that's certainly an opportunity for people that, um, that are looking for ways to continue to get involved. Um, and then the last thing, and then I'll see where Dennis wants to go with questions or, or what else, um, is this idea of legacy. And it's what we've been focusing on in the, the committee discussions for the last couple of months. And, you know, it's again, like the Bicentennial, it, it isn't a finite thing, but, you know, legacy. So what is it? Well, first is this, you know, we've, we've had a very successful um, social media push through Facebook, through Instagram, and that that shouldn't go away, that it, gives, it, it provides us a continued opportunity to stay engaged and engage the community. Uh, it's just a matter of rebranding. So no longer EC200, but what is, uh, you know, what would make sense as a rebranding of the social media to continue these heritage groups, the community groups that have come together to stay together as we work through the bicentennial, you know, further out there's the city bicentennial, there's all sorts of things that, you know, the, the group um, can continue to work on. So with that goes the idea of continuing the working group that we've been, you know, we've been Zooming every couple of months um, and that we may not need to Zoom every couple of months, but if we Zoom quarterly to talk about, you know, what is BNHV got going on or what is the Science Museum or what's Penn Dixie got coming up that could benefit from the attention of everybody that we could all get together to work on that would continue to move this idea of EC200 into the next hundred years. Um, we've talked about time capsules. Uh, uh, Lindsay Visser is working on a digital one. There's also discussion about a fiscal one. We just have to figure out where we're gonna house it. Um, and then one of the long range goals has always been um, to look at the historical markers that exist, but then also the historical markers that are missing. And so we've identified four or five of them and 
hope to uh, gather from our working group, a subcommittee uh, to look at markers and utilize some of the funds that remain available as part of EC200 to create those markers that we've identified and, and you know, make sure that in the discussion, we haven't missed something. So that's, that's ongoing. And then uh, I know Jason and Melissa are on, so on behalf of everybody and including County Executive Poland Cars, next uh, Wednesday, the 27th at the Buffalo History Museum at four, there'll be sort of a formal, a more formal closing uh, with Mark delivering some comments and some proclamations and a chance for us to sort of, you know, kind of take a deep breath, let, you know, sigh heavily and, and talk about what we've done. And I think that's, and I'll, I'll finish with this thought as we head towards one o'clock. It, in looking at this, you know, I, I bumped into a, a friend of mine who I worked with on the Clarence Bicentennial 13 years ago. And he said, oh, you know, I know it's the Bicentennial, but it doesn't look like anything's happening. And I thought today was a really good chance to talk about how we've celebrated 200 years of history and to remind all of us, because I think a lot of times we were so, you know, intensely involved in it, it was hard to step back and look at the big picture that really given COVID and all the challenges we've had, we really did pull off an awful lot in terms of commemorating 200 years of history. Um, so with that, I've run two minutes over, but if you all know me, that's not too bad. So I'll kick it back to Dennis and see where he wants to, to go with it from this point. Doug, that was perfect and a, and a good uh, uh, loose fitting summary of a couple, uh, several years effort and uh, certainly 200 years of, of Erie County. Uh, you know what we're gonna, uh, let, let's go back to uh, uh, the proclamation. Uh, Jason, do you have a copy of it? Uh, can we get, do you have that? I do, I, I have a writer for me on my screen. Uh, you know, just uh, because as I say, I thought it was uh, greatly appreciated uh, uh, and, it, and it's a good whereas statement. Uh, let's get it into the archival record as well as uh, let our audience hear uh, it's it's short it's a it's a one pager but uh, uh, might you read it on behalf of uh, the county executive who signed sure. it sure Con for the county of erie celebrating ec 200 whereas the county of erie was officially designated on april 2nd 1821 and marked its 200th anniversary in april 2021 and whereas an Erie County Bicentennial Committee to plan and implement a year long program of bicentennial activities from April 2021 to April 2022 to mark this milestone began meeting in June of 2018 under the leadership of Melissa Brown, Doug Kohler and Jason Hurley. And whereas the committee now known as EC200 has grown to include representatives of more than 200 nonprofit organizations from across Erie County, which has implemented 100, 100 EC200 programs virtual and in person over the past year that reached thousands of people. Whereas the committee has effectively collaborated to implement an extensive year long program promoting the county's bicentennial and its myriad of activities and historic stories through billboards, a centralized calendar, websites, radio spots, news stories, and social media. And whereas the committee developed and distributed 5,000 Erie County heritage passports, both printed and virtual that encouraged the public to visit and take advantage of the numerous large and small heritage sites across Erie County. And whereas these many activities have had a positive effect on the viability and visibility of the county's heritage sites and resources despite the limitations of the COVID pandemic and have encouraged an outgoing collaborative network of participating organizations. Now, therefore be it resolved that Mark Polonkar's Erie County Executive uh, hereby proclaims April 19th, 2022 as EC200 Day in Erie County. In addition, he heartily congratulates the members of the EC200 Committee for their commitment and good work celebrating the county's bicentennial and applaud the recognition bestowed upon it by the Center for the Study of Art, Architecture, History, and Nature's Imagine Greater Buffalo Series on this day of April 19th, 2022. That's Thank awesome. You. Thank you, Jason. Uh, 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 very good. You know, uh, uh, if I could ask Melissa, are you on uh, Melissa Brown from the History Museum? I'm sure if she's there. And and just, I just uh, there I am Dennis. I was just muted, so I couldn't. Oh, I, it was she had Joy had us muted in the settings. I, I, um, and, I, and I this is a surprise. I didn't tell you ahead of time I was going to ask you. But would you like to add a a, a few moments of just your reflection to? Uh, to uh, compliment uh, what Doug has said? Uh, certainly. I mean, I think um, Doug captured um, a marathon of activity and a, and a 
quick sprint and did a great job at it. Um, I, I just have to say that, you know, in reflecting about the pandemic as well, and how you don't anticipate, you know, things that are coming, I found that the committee really gained traction when we did have to shift to the virtual pro platform to start meeting. Um, and the I, I just have been humbled in working with this group and what um, they have been able to pull together, including things like um, the passport and all the different events. I'm always struck in doing this work, uh, particularly at you know smaller heritage-based organizations, the drive of the the volunteers and the passion um, to bring these things forward. So I hope. Um, you know, through things like the passport program and the different events that uh, visibility was raised for those organizations. And I think, um, you know, I, Doug will not say this himself, but I, I want to give Doug a special shout out um, because from a content standpoint, um, not only was he the principal writer of the Continuum exhibit, but also um, he and Cynthia Van Ness, the director of our library, worked really diligently to pull together all the content for the billboards that ran, you know, all the way from last summer until now, you know, programming each week of um, information, both with the moments in history, but also marking things as they were happening in real time. And um, I know this is not the only job that he does. Uh, so I, you know, I'm very appreciative uh, of that. And, and of course, um, Jason, when I reflect back, um, you know, outside of the committee, Jason too, um, you know, he had a baby during all of this and I don't really think he got much of a leave from his duties. Um, so I just, I, I think what I'm most grateful for is that this has convened a network and like D Doug said, um, we're really just beginning. And, uh, you know, Dennis, you've been so great at providing a forum through Imagine. Uh, so I think, you know, now having these connections and the actual e emails and contacts for everyone will be able to um, keep momentum going from this and look forward to, um, you know, commemorating our history together and thinking through plans like Doug said for the canal and other events coming together, which I think we're definitely stronger together. Very nice. Very nice. Uh now back to our Melissa in the library. Uh, Melissa, do we have any questions uh, from anybody in the audience? We do not at this time. Then let's just have a few more minutes of discussion. We, we Jason. Actually, you... We actually did, and I sent it to Jason, and Jason's ah. going to respond to that. Sorry. Oh, we got yeah, a couple go of ahead. questions. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I got two things to cover. Uh, somebody had asked about uh, receiving a coin still. Uh, the Buffalo History Museum still has plenty. Uh, if you come check out and by request uh, see Continuum, request a coin while you're there uh, during their normal hours. And it's buffalohistory.org, right, Melissa? I see your head shaking, yes. Um, and if there's anything else, you know, you can always, if there are any other questions regarding the Bicentennial or anything county related, my personal email is jason.hurley at erie.gov. And I can shoot you those instructions as well uh, in writing, just so you have them in case you want to share them with any groups or anything like that. But Doug or Dennis, if it's all right, I also just wanted to acknowledge a couple other people on the call from our committee that have been wonderful. Uh, Kaz Rodriguez, our chair for DEI is on, I see. Patty Pierce from the uh, Passport Group. Uh, Chip Butler from the Black Rock Historical, who organized one of the bicentennial concerts uh, just a couple of weeks ago at Sportsman's Tavern that was very well attended and a lot of fun. Uh, let's see who else is on. Uh, Alan Davis, and I saw one other uh, main member that we had. Oh, Renee Jones, also from NFJC, uh, and Diane uh, Pesh, Sagittary. So just a lot of our committee members also joining us today. I want to thank them because it really was a building from the ground up type of organization. And with them doing their own uh, events and stories and things like that, we wouldn't have had nearly as much content and things going on as we did. Jason, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, if any other questions come in, uh, Melissa, you know, uh, holler. But uh, Doug, did you have your hand raised? Is that up? Yeah, actually, whoops. One. Yeah, I just wanted to apologize. I'm speaking of my other job. I've got a class waiting to talk about Andrew Jackson. So I just want to take a minute. And Dennis, thank you for the invite to thank publicly Jason and Melissa for, you know, the, the work that that 
we've all been able to do together. It's been my pleasure. And to all the committee members, uh, thank you for, uh, you know, it couldn't have been a more challenging bicentennial, but I, I think in reflection that, that it became the bicentennial we, we wanted and it, it, we really did good things. So to everybody, thank you. And I apologize, I've got to run talk about Old Hickory. Mm -hmm. Dennis, thanks for the invite. You're quite welcome. Thank you, Doug, for the presentation. Thank Great. you. Thank all right. Uh, one of the things the Legacy Committee, I'll just uh, start to wrap up here by noted, noting uh, that we're discussing uh, every April, uh, we focus on Erie County history uh, uh, and start to get that thought into the uh, education system, uh, just uh, beyond Buffalo and through the, uh, throughout the county, certainly, uh, all the different school districts and whatnot. Let teachers get innovative with projects uh, at all levels, uh, literally K through 12. So um, uh, at the lower level and uh, perhaps at the college level as well. Uh, it, it, um, uh, it, it, it's about where we've been, but it's really, uh, from my standpoint, where we're going. Uh, and I think that was the, the, the consensus of the folks uh, that worked on this program. A lot of good people in this community. Um, I will um, uh, oh, also mention thanks to Explore Buffalo. Let's see if I can get this on. This workbook was digitized. Chuck Lacusa did a great job of doing that. And it's available uh, for teachers, for families, for uh, preschool uh, to be downloaded in uh, a coloring book, activities, connect the dots, uh, important buildings that tell many stories about presidents and and um, uh, our own Erie County, uh, old Erie County Hall uh, with its uh, four magnificent statues on the top is a, is a major uh, attraction uh, to be observed. Uh, those four represent agriculture, which we focused a couple of weeks ago on a program uh, in Erie County on agriculture and the land conservancy, uh, as well as justice, as well as mechanical arts and commerce. So uh, uh, they, th those were important in 1876. And believe me, it seems they're very important going forward uh, from 2022 uh, on. So my uh, suggestion, by the way, of officially is we rebrand EC200 to EC200 plus, just add a plus sign to it. And, uh, and maybe that'll be a way to keep what we've done, the digitized uh, portions, uh, and keep adding to it uh, as we go along. Just a suggestion, uh, uh, you know, for the group to consider. So, any um, uh, any other thoughts, uh, Joy or Melissa, from the library to to finish up with? Um, I think it's it's been a great show. We appreciate everyone calling in, and we're heading to one fifteen. And I know we've promised people we'll always end as close to one o'clock as possible. So let's keep the the. Erie County legacy in our thoughts for many, 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 many future generations. And thank you all for your hard work toward a fantastic year. Thanks, Joy. And that's a good way to end it. Uh, thanks, folks, for uh, being here. Join us next week, same time when we will hear from Kathy Leacock and uh, close out our 13-month uh, uh, program, well over 50 uh, uh, virtual Imagine Greater Buffalo programs. We're going to look at the Buffalo Museum of Science, uh, looking back and looking forward. That's what Kathy will, Kathy Leacock will be doing next week. I'm Dennis Galecki. Be well and good day.